couple weeks ago, I was over on Rebecca's podcast and I talked about this activity that I did when I was teaching orbitals in chemistry. And chemistry is not my forte, but the, this activity made a lot of it make sense, if not for my kids and at least for me. So I wanted to walk you through it because I've gotten a couple questions to elaborate on it. I thought I found it on Pinterest, can't find any more. So I'm just going to reenact what my brain remembers it was. So here I am, kid free today in my kitchen. I'm going to attempt to reenact it with random things I find around my house. So I found three random size containers from around my house that I'm going to use for each of the orbitals. So these little Dixie cups, these are going to represent my S orbitals. Why are they my S orbitals? Because they can only handle a couple pieces of candy. And then I have these larger cups that I actually used for pendulum painting in my physics class. And this is going to represent a P orbital. The P orbitals are a little bit bigger so they can hold six pieces of candy comfortably. Then this is the next closest size I have anywhere in my house. This is going to be the D orbital. And D orbitals can hold 10 pieces of candy. So I'm going to set up something similar to my orbital diagram chart. And I'm going to put a row of S orbitals kind of spaced out a little bit. So I have S1, S2, S3, S4. And then I'm going to fill in my P's coordinating to those. And then I'm going to fill in my D orbitals as well. So now I have a visual that lines up with my little chart where I'm going to fill in going diagonal. So I'm going to use candy as my electrons and fill my orbitals with how many pieces they can have in that diagonal pattern to give a visual for what's actually happening. So in this case, I have seven electrons. And so I know I can put two electrons in my first S orbital. I can put two in the next because I'm going to come down diagonal. And then I can put six in here, but I only had three left. I'm going to be able to look at that and say that I'm ending on the P2 orbital with three electrons. Now, if you want to take it and talk about electron spin, then what you can do is go ahead and replace a cup, which is just great for counting out your electrons, and instead put in three of the smaller Dixie cups into either a taped off area or a separate container. So now this is going to represent my P orbital. And as I go through my candy now, I'm going to make my Jolly Ranchers spin one direction and then my starburst are going to spin the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my electron orbitals with nine electrons. So I'm going to start with a starburst and then a Jolly Rancher to fill up my S1, then starburst oops, and Jolly Rancher to fill up my S2. Then when it comes to my P2, every cup is going to get a starburst first and then I'm gonna come back and fill in my Jolly Ranchers. So this is another really easy visual way to go ahead and label with my up and down arrow directions on my orbital diagram. You don't have to do this with candy. You could just use different colored markers, different colored pieces of paper. But I think that the visual is really helpful knowing that these can each hold two and we have a whole stack there. But when you're just counting out how many are going in, I think that having the different size cups is going to help students understand how many electrons can be held in a single orbital level. So this is how I would take something that is a little bit harder to visualize for students and put it into something that is kinesthetic and also very visual. I only taught chemistry for the one year, but I think that this would be a really effective learning tool. It wraps up what I was trying to explain in that podcast episode, but I hope you found it helpful because I think that this is something that students can really get behind, especially if you let them eat the candy after. Mm -hmm.